When testing passive devices like resistors, capacitors, or inductors, the tracker voltage is not very important. Semiconductors are different in this respect. Since the signal being used is a sine wave, the tracker can display the signature of a semiconductor showing its reaction to both a positive and negative voltage. The simplest semiconductor is a diode. It is essentially an electrical valve that conducts current only when the voltage applied reaches its breakdown threshold. With silicone devices, this threshold is roughly 600 millivolts. The reaction of a diode to the tracker signal is clearly shown in its signature. The horizontal portion of the signature shows the diode in its off or non-conducting state. When the voltage reaches a positive 600 millivolts, the diode turns on and conducts current indicated by the vertical portion of the signature. The tracker horizontal graticule provides a visual indication of the breakdown voltage where the center is zero volts, the left end is negative voltage, and the right end is positive voltage. As an example, if the tracker voltage is set to 4 volts, then the left end of the graticule is negative 4 volts and the right end is positive 4 volts. Since each side of the graticule is divided into 4 divisions, this means that each division is worth 1 volt. Knowing this information, you can now calculate the approximate breakdown voltage of a diode based on where the signature changes from horizontal to vertical along the graticule. In this example, the breakdown voltage of the diode is approximately 0.6 volts. Another type of semiconductor is the Zener diode. Zener diodes react differently than the simple diode shown earlier in that you will see a breakdown point in the positive direction but also the negative direction. The breakdown voltage depends on the construction of the Zener diode. Zener diodes will have a rated voltage at which they are supposed to break down. This is why they can be useful in an electronic circuit for setting a reference voltage or voltage surge protection. The characteristic chair pattern shown displays the forward and reverse breakdown voltage and based on where the breakdown points are located along the graticule, you can calculate the approximate breakdown voltages. This example shows a horizontal width of about 6.2 volts with the tracker set to 8 volts. Of course, the tracker voltage needs to be set high enough to show the reverse breakdown voltage. Here is the same Zener diode with the tracker set to 4 volts. The negative peak voltage of the applied sine wave is too low for the Zener diode to reach its reverse breakdown voltage. Raise the tracker back to 8 volts and now you see the reverse breakdown point. Transistors are a slightly more complex semiconductor. They are basically an electrical valve that is controlled by the amount of voltage applied to the base connection. The signatures shown are similar to simple and Zener diodes. When testing from the base to the collector of this NPN transistor, you will typically see a simple diode signature. Test between the base and emitter and you will usually see a Zener signature shape. This occurs because of the construction of the device. Signatures from a PMP transistor will show signatures with reverse polarity, making them look upside down when compared to an NPN transistor. You may need to change your voltage setting to see the base emitter breakdown as you test various transistors, such as this power transistor, where the voltage is set to 20 volts. Semiconductors can fail in several different ways. The most common is resistive leakage, usually caused by a power surge or spike. Resistive damage usually causes the horizontal portion of the semiconductor signature to show an angle similar to what you would see with a resistor. The angle is a result of internal damage causing a resistive short between the layers of the semiconductor substrate. This would be similar to putting a resistor directly across the leads of the device. The amount of resistance depends on the severity of the damage. Sometimes the internal short has very low resistance. The resistance of this transistor base to emitter short is around 500 ohms. Internal shorts can also have a higher resistance. The resistive leakage on this integrated circuit component is clearly evident with the tracker range set higher at 5k ohms. Note the horizontal portion of the signature is at an angle indicating resistance. 
This failure is a good reason to always include a higher resistance tracker range when testing semiconductors. You never know how resistive a failure will be, so using a 10K to 50K ohm range will ensure you do not miss high resistance failures. Semiconductors can also show degradation that will affect their operation. The degradation can be a result of overvoltage or overcurrent stress, and also poor component quality. This good 6.2 volt Zener diode displayed in green shows clean breakdown points as it makes the transition from the non-conducting to conducting state at 0.6 and 6.2 volts. This breakdown point is sometimes referred to as the knee. The knee should be sharp. This suspect 6.2 volt Zener diode displayed in red shows a reverse breakdown point that is not sharp and has a curved appearance. The transition from non-conducting to conducting is not immediate and has a resistive component to it. This device could cause problems in circuit since it would not be regulating the voltage threshold accurately. Here is a signature from a diode that was used in a surge protection circuit. When compared to a good diode of the same type, you can clearly see the difference in voltage breakdown values. The bad diode is breaking down at a higher voltage than the good diode. This is a somewhat unusual failure as most semiconductor problems involve some type of resistive change. For more information you can always contact Huntron Technical Support by telephone or email. And be sure to check out the other videos available on the Huntron YouTube channel. As always, thank you for watching.